Happy Tuesday, peeps. It's the last day of March. Sucky month, to say the least. Um, tonight's musical guest, I keep saying guest, will be showcasing uh, 42nd and Nelson, another excellent band that I was um, got to was introduced to working at KJ Farrell's on Tuesday night. They did a great singer-songwriter roundtable once a month. It was awesome. Got to find out about another awesome amount of great bands. Tonight's cocktail we'll be making will be a Manhattan. Okay. First, of course, I've been getting into this a little bit. I'm trying to give you a little history beforehand. So, this says, a Manhattan is a cocktail made with whiskey, sweet vermouth, and bitters. While rye is the traditional whiskey of choice, other commonly used whiskeys include Canadian whiskey, bourbon, blended whiskey, and Tennessee whiskey. The cocktail is usually stirred, then strained into a cocktail glass and garnished with a dark maraschino cherry. It may... may uh, la, la. A Manhattan may also be served on the, on the rocks in a rock glass. The whiskey-based Manhattan is one of five cocktails named for the city, New York City borough. It is closely related to the Brooklyn cocktail, which uses dry vermouth and maraschino liqueur in place of Manhattan's sweet vermouth, and Amer Pecan in place of Manhattan's ag, ag, bitters, I'm just going to say. The Manhattan is one of six basic drinks listed in David A. Embury's 1948 classic, The Fine Art of Mixing Drinks. Popular history suggests that the drink originated in, Manhatt in the Manhattan Club in New York City in the mid-1870s, where it was invented by Dr. Ian Marshall for a banquet hosted by Jenny Jerome, Lady Randolph Churchill, mother of Winston, in honor of presidential candidate Samuel J. Tilden. The success of the banquet made the drink fashionable, later prompting several people to request the drink by referring to the name of the club where it originated, the Manhattan Cocktail. However, Lady Randolph was in France at the time and pregnant, so that story is likely fiction. However, there are prior references to various similar cocktail recipes called Manhattan and served in the Manhattan area. By one account, it was invented in the 1860s by a bartender named Black at a bar on Broadway near Houston Street. The original Manhattan cocktail was a mix of American whiskey, Italian vermouth, and bitters. During Prohibition, Canadian whiskey was primarily used, bleh, primarily used because it was available. I swear I'm not drinking yet. An early record of the cocktail can be found in William Schmidt's The Flowing Bowl, published in 1891. If he, in it, he details a drink containing two dashes of, gu of gum syrup, two dashes of bitters, one dash of absinthe, two-thirds portion of whiskey, and a third portion of vermouth. The same cocktail appears listed as a Tennessee cocktail and Shake 'em Up by V. Elliott and P. Strong. Two parts of whiskey, one part Italian vermouth, and a dash of bitters poured over ice and stirred vigorously. On the small North Frisian island of four, the Manhattan cocktail is a standard drink at almost every cafe, restaurant, sorry, it is torrential pouring here right now. Crazy, crazy. Tornado watch, crazy. So excuse the loud noises in the background. Sorry, let's start again. On the small North Frisian island of Fleur, the Manhattan cocktail is a standard drink at almost every cafe, restaurant, and get-together of locals. The story goes that many of the people of Four F, that weird O, H, R, emigrated to Manhattan during deep sea fishing trips, took a liking to the drink, and brought it back to Fleur with them. The drink is usually mixed one part vermouth to two parts whiskey with a dash of bitters served ice cold in an ice cold glass or with ice and a cherry garnish. Now I'm going to use bourbon because I don't have any rye. I have, I have flavored Crown Royal, but that's not the same. And it does go on to show me a couple of different variations that we'll get to in a future episode. But right now I'm going to make a, a, a typical Manhattan um, with bourbon. Also, by the way, I do have to make a comment. In my Long Island Iced Tea video, I forgot to add the, um, the triple set. So it's vodka, gym, rum, tequila, triple sec, same amount, three quarters to an ounce of each, and then the rest goes on blah, blah, blah. So um, I'm sorry about that. And um, like I said, this is a wing it and go as, learn as I go. Okay. I'm also having some problems with my music in the background for some reason. 42nd and Nelson's CD, who's been on my my iPod for years, I can't seem to see why it won't play continuously. So if I stop and just to hit the next song. So first we're going to take 
Now I'm gonna pour mine on the on a rock, but most people like it in either way. It either goes in a rock glass or in a martini glass, like I've showed you before, like we used for last night. So I'm gonna take some ice. Now a lot of people say with the vermouth, it should never be shaken, always stir. For it because I've heard that that goes with a regular martini that it bruises the vermouth. All right, whatever. I'm shaking it because I like it ice cold. All right, so we're gonna take two shots of bourbon, but you all know I'm a wet lightweight, so I'm only gonna do a little bit. Boom, uh, that kind of is kind of like two shots. Now, when I have a guest come to the bar, I always ask them if they like it sweeter, not so sweet. It depends on each individual, Is everybody's different. And here we go again. I should learn to open the bottles before I start by that. All right, so this is, can you see that? Sweet vermouth, also used in a couple other cocktails. I'm gonna put, it says, I'll just, I'm putting a little bit in there. I do like it sweet, but you know I'm not drinking this whole cocktail. So for purposes, to, you know, for visual purposes, that's what it looks like. Now, one of the most important things are bitters. Now, bitters come in all kinds of flavors, cherry, orange, but this is the aromatic bitters. This is the basic. I've even seen them in chocolate. So once I start working again and I get a little bit more funds going or people start tipping me better or whatever, I'm going to try to experiment a little bit more. So this is a couple of dashes. I love the smell of this stuff. If you are not feeling good, it is the most delicious, delicious thing to, to do. So we're going to, normally, this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to back of the spoon to the, to the inside of the glass so it doesn't splash out. Couple of stirs. That's how you're supposed to do it. But you know me, I do things my way. And it's just me drinking it, so I want it to be ice cold. So I'm going to put that in a shaker. Shake, shake, shake. Oh, that looks good. So, because I'm going to do it on the rock, rock, get it? I'm going to take that huge rock. That's weird. That's like the same song. I don't know what's going on with my... I really don't know what's going on with my iPod. So, we're going to just pause for a minute. And I'm going to go back... So, love is a flame. I'm going to try this one. Now I'm going to strain it. Even though I have a cube in the glass, I'm going to strain it over the rock. Not to be confused with Dwayne Johnson. Cool. Okay. So, but, why is this playing the same music? I do not understand. So we're going to have to go fix this. Fix this. I'm trying to fix this at the same time. Let's see what's going on. We'll try this one. Maybe this one will work. Sorry, Farella. Having technical difficulties. Still a great band. Love them. Love you guys both. Miss you all. But every cocktail, well, almost every cocktail comes with a garnish. And a Manhattan, very important, the garnish. And look what I got. Besides the filthy cherries, this guy told me at the Bill's Liquor Store, shout out to Bill's Liquor Store in, in, in um, Somerville, when I bought the filthy cherries, he told me that these were awesome. And they are marinated Woodford Reserve. Just a hint of Woodford Reserve. So we're going to take one of those puppies... Oh, now look at the difference. See that dark, delicious cherry? That's the way cherries are supposed to be. Drop that puppy in there, give it a little bit of stir. Cheers. Boozy, but actually quite delicious. Some people even like to put a little syrup in. So you know what? I'm gonna be my, me, and I'm gonna put a little drop of that syrup in there. Try it. Wow, that makes a lot. I get when, when some people like it a little sweeter than not. So, that will that was the Bourbon Manhattan. Like I said, it can be made with rye, whiskey, Jack Daniels. It's what your preference is. 
um, I just want to say thank you for watching. I appreciate everybody's support. I am going to take off tomorrow because I have to really get a move on. on um, I really want to amp up my sewing of these masks to send it back to New York for um, some people that need them up there. And I have to do the ones for down here for the Joanne Fabric to donate to. I guess they're using them for non-essential people, but still people need these masks. So I'm going to take Wednesday off. We'll call it Wind Down Wednesday, like not W-I-N-E, Y-I-N-D, Wind Down Wednesday. Taking a day off again. Our musical selection today was 42nd and Nelson. And got to do a little self-promotion. Tips are not necessary, but greatly appreciated, especially with now I don't know when my next paycheck is coming from. Don't know when the unemployment or the stimulus check is coming, so I'm basically broke. You can Venmo me at JennySan629. And the jewelry that you see I'm wearing today, all made by me. My knotted silk lariat, my bracelets. Some of the bracelets aren't on the website, my, but my website is sunlit and happy on Etsy.com. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. I hope that you guys are being safe. I love you all, and I really hope this thing blows over because God knows it's crazy. Again, cheers. See you Thursday, possibly Friday. Mwah.